Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we're going to continue with the Flat Earth's efforts to debunk Professor Dave and his 10 challenge questions. Now in the first question, the Flat Earth had to come up with a real working Flat Earth map with a scale and quite frankly, they failed miserably. Now, the reason that they failed was not simply because they probably misunderstood the question but they had no way of actually completing the question because there is no such thing as a flat earth map. One of the main ways they tried to disprove this was they looked at maps that were projections of the spherical earth and claimed those were flat earth maps with distortions. That confuses an actual representation of the earth with a projection. They cannot produce a 2D map of a 2D world because there is no such thing as a 2D world, and that's why they can't make a map of it. But today we're going to see another series of logical errors as they try and answer some very basic questions about Antarctica and the Midnight Sun. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now, once again, I'm not going to give any oxygen or needed attention to the Flat Earth. If you would like to see where this video came from, which is being billed as a generic answer from the Flat Earth, there's the specific video. There will be a link to Professor Dave's challenge questions and my summary of those challenge questions in the description of this video. Number two, as we all know, the existence of Antarctica poses a huge problem for you. When it is summer in the northern hemisphere, you love to pretend that the sun moves inwards to this tropic, making the days longer here and shorter in the southern hemisphere. And then when it's winter in the north, you like to put the sun at the other tropic, which you think gives you the shorter days up north that you want, but in the south, it's total chaos. You have the sun tracing this enormous trajectory, which would leave everything out here in darkness for most of the day, when in reality, there are long periods of time in Antarctica where the sun never sets. I hear you. I understand what you're saying. I haven't been there. I don't know if you have. Now here he starts off with the first logical error. He wants to set up a condition on evidence that requires you to personally measure it. That is not a condition of evidence. I can measure something that will be accepted by you and you can measure something that can be accepted by me. The reason for this is that other people can check these measurements. And if they don't come up with the same thing that I came up with, for example, my measurement could be invalidated. Likewise, I don't have to personally be working in the South Pole to realize and understand and accept the fact that the South Pole exists. I have reports from people at the South Pole. We have photographic evidence of the South Pole. I know people who have worked in the South Pole. Even though I've never been there myself, I can be very confident in my assertion that the South Pole indeed exists just as I can be very confident in my assertion that England exists, even though I've never been to England. Likewise, I've never been to Australia, but I'm pretty confident it exists too. Or does it? But it makes a big difference to actually make the observations versus accepting what you're told. This is another logical error that the Flat Earth loves to make. They love to use the term, we are told, we are led to believe. We have to accept what we're told. We don't have to accept what we're told. We can actually go there, just like you can go there. It's not a matter of accepting something on blind faith. It's accepting something with overwhelming evidence. There's a difference there. Since your dinky little sun can never illuminate this entire fantasy ice wall at once, this completely obliterates your model, which is why you resort to conspiracy. You simply deny that this midnight sun ever occurs while claiming that no one can go to Antarctica to verify it for themselves. Now, most of us that are familiar with the Flat Earth have heard this many, many times before. You can't go to Antarctica because of something called the Antarctic Treaty. Antarctica is off limits. You can't travel there. It's got armed guards around it. What is the basis of this? The Antarctic Treaty. Now, quite frankly, has any of them even looked at the Antarctic Treaty even once? If so, would you be kind enough to point out the article that says civilians cannot go to Antarctica? 
I have a link to the Antarctic Treaty in the description. You can look at it yourself. Why don't you go ahead and put in the comments what section of the Antarctic Treaty says civilians cannot go there. I'd like to know, because I haven't been able to find one. And yes, we are told without any evidence by the Flat Earth that Antarctica is simply a ring of ice and the South Pole does not exist. We point out evidence that the South Pole is indeed there, and we have a research station there, and people fly over it, people visit it, yet that's all CGI, I guess. Whoa, slow down there, champ. Okay, what you showed with the sun going around and it illuminates in the southern latitudes on the outside, that can happen several different ways, and it's demonstrable by experiment. And one of them is the reflection. So you know how fiber optics work. When you have a shallow angle beam on a glossy surface, a reflective surface, the reflectivity of the light increases in, well, not even a linear scale. I think it is logarithmic with very, very high reflectivity. That's how fiber optics work over such large distances. And that reflectivity of the light happens along a smooth curved surface. Now, we do speak of a dome. Oh my gosh, it's a word that sets people off. Well, though I haven't been to it and I can't see it or touch it myself in person. Now, what we have here is an example of an ad hoc word salad nonsense explanation for something that they're caught on. And that's the midnight sun at the South Pole. If you listen to him, he says that, well, it could be reflectivity and fiber optics, and it could be tested by experiment. Did you test it by an experiment? Did you match the results of that experiment to observations from the shore of Antarctica? I don't think so. You're just throwing it out to try and cloud the issue a little bit. But you see, that's the difference between a movement where you're trying to promote a narrative and actual science. Now, in actual science, we do experiments. So, for example, I've got this right here. This is a handy-dandy little styrofoam ring. And as you can see, I've got tinfoil around it. That gives me a nice reflective environment on the inside. Then I can take a light and I can shine it against that ice wall. Now, you notice down here, I've got some toothpicks down at the bottom. Now, if this light, which I'm shining on the ice wall, somehow traveled around the ice wall and illuminated the rim of this object from the outside, there would be shadows cast up towards the center from these toothpicks. That does not occur. Now, this is an experiment. I'm sorry the lighting on this isn't very good. But this is an experiment that you can try at home and see the results will be exactly as I described them. There will be no rim of light coming around this reflected area, shining shadows towards the center from these toothpicks down at the bottom. Now here's another little thought exercise that kind of blows his idea out of the water, showing it to be an ad hoc, nonsense, word salad response to a legitimate question. How do you explain the sun? in Antarctica. If it was fiber optics on the ice wall, you would think that the sun would shine on the ice wall and make it glow. And that glow would be carried around to the other side of the world, leaving the center by the North Pole in darkness, which reflects what we actually see. However, what would we see then? We would see glowing ice all the way around. And the source of light at the South Pole on the opposite side of the Earth from the Sun would be this ice wall. It would be shining light outward. There would be no sun in the sky. Yet his own video clearly shows a 24-hour sun in the sky, which completely invalidates his entire premise. But he can't figure that out. 
because his purpose is not to figure it out. His purpose is simply to raise a nonsensical question to run us off into a rabbit hole and divert attention from the real question. Now, one thing that I want to bring to your attention is here is the sun right here. Now, notice that in order to light up this part of the Earth, the sunbeams have to go across this entire area, including the North Pole. That can't happen. Now, the other thing is, what is the range of the sun's light? In all the previous illustrations, it shows the sunlight coming like this. That means this entire area of the South Pole would have to be in darkness. Yet, during the time of the year the sun is down at the Tropic of Capricorn, the entire ice wall, i.e. all of Antarctica, is in sunlight. So even though we can clearly see the sun in this picture, and we can clearly see the sun transverse 360 degrees from the South Pole in December, he is claiming that somehow the sun's not there. It's light being reflected upward from this LED ice ring that's being lit up from the other side of the Earth, leaving the North Pole region in darkness. There is no evidence whatsoever that the image of the sun is reflected off of an object in the sky. But let him continue. Now, we do speak of a dome. Oh my gosh, it's a word that sets people off. Well, though I haven't been to it and I can't see it or touch it. Well, guys, as much as I'd like to continue to go on about the dome over the flat earth, remember that the original question was, how do you explain 24 hours of sunlight in December at the South Pole? So far, all we've gotten is ad hoc word salad. Now, my favorite has got to be the fact that the ice wall acts as a fiber optic transmitter of light from one side of the earth to the other. Of course, this flies in the face of all facts and observations from the South Pole, but never let the facts get in the way of a good story. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Tune in tomorrow and we'll talk about the dome. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe down there and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys.